It's a ghetto people song, only them can sing this world. It's a song for the poor who is facing suffering. It's a ghetto people song, only them can sing this world. It's a song for the poor who is facing suffering. Young Police Channel from Jamaica. Big up, Rastafari. Everton Blender said that. Yes, welcome to the Jamaica Young Police Channel. To our loyal viewers, subscribers and Patreon members. At the channel, we are a group of law-abiding citizens who believe in the rule of law and respect the rights of every citizen. But not the ones who do not subscribe to such behavior. We do believe in and support preemptive strikes because they save lives. This is a logical conclusion because preemptive strikes save lives and prevent the further loss of lives. We are all about saving lives at this channel. We at the channel aid criminals with a passion and do not want them over here. We do not want your views, your subscriptions, your likes or your comments. Please go elsewhere where the red carpet is waiting for you. Over here, we want you to go to prison or the departure lounge at Madden. Moving on to today's video yeah so as we continue the journey this is part two yeah man part two of the two-part series uh why um vibes cartel friend shabdan kill pala yeah man and the death of pala was because of this man yeah man mikey pelpa um this is the dread mikey pelpa the man who caused pala to lose his life in mobile st james because of words on the street that he had paid him to kill vibes cartel so as we continue your journey, you're going to hear for yourself. So you watch, you listen, and you decide. As we tell all of the youth, them, you know, there's no one is criminal. So when you fight to become a criminal, it's only two places you fight to go. You fight to go to the departure lounge or you fight for the prison. There's nothing. There's no allure in it. You understand? Everything where you do as a criminal, when you go to jail, you defecate, you piss, you fart. You do everything in a concrete cell with other men. So all I think the way used to enjoy what I would they lose that. So if you don't have freedom and you don't have no self-respect, you're going to gravitate to a life of crime. This guy, uh, Mikey Pelpa, didn't have to venture down that road. So eventually you're going to hear how he died and all of these things. So you watch, you listen, and you decide. If you're not a gang, but this dread, Mikey Pelpa, who caused his pala to lose his life in Montego Bay, St. Jim, because of words on the street that he had paid pala to kill cartel. So that's why pala dead. So pala was paid by um, this dread, Mikey Pelpa, for kill vibes cartel. So on the street, then time you hear say, I'm going to have to kill him. See, that's the difference with vibes cartel. Vibes cartel, you never bother to ask Pelpa. He never bother to ask Pala, if I choose him, get paid for kill him. Cartel, make sure him kill him. So that's how it's different with cartel and the five men, them will get killed. You understand? So you see, different. that's why the police him say vibes cartel is like a silver fox. So him get information, heard say, hey, why Pelpa run money pan Pala, you know, for kill you, you know. And cartel, no, say Pala, a killer. He no ask Pala, say, if I choose him, get money for kill him. No, he make sure he say, put things in place and kill Pala first. Because if you don't catch me, I me mean, catch you, you understand what I'm saying? So I saw it going to the criminal honor world. Cartel is like a silver fox, that's why I'm still alive. Yes. So, the fact that Pala was killed for his allegiance to Pelpa revealed a deeply stake of loyalty within the world, a place where alliances can quickly become life and death. So this is the story of Mikey Pelpa, the man whose name was whispered in the alleys and streets. A name that ultimately led to the death of Gregor Paula Thompson. A top enforcer known for his loyalty and ruthless reputation. You know, a man that killed a whole heap of people. The word on the streets was that Pelpa had allegedly paid Paula to kill Vibes Cartel, escalating an already deadly feud and setting in motion a tragic chain of, chain of events that will ultimately cost Pala his life. So what cartel do you know? You see, just like how, ah, you see, you see different how him stay now. Look on the other man, all other men them, where no someone I kill them, 
Well, them do, they ask the man, them say, boy, I choose to kill me. <laughs> and the man, them say, no. Them so dumb and them thing, but you ask the man, them if the man kill you. It's like you give the man, them a gun for kill you. Cartel no do that. Cartel here and he make certain to say, we not, no hey, look here. We not in that criminality, you know, we just tell you how, we must say, no, there's no honest criminals. All of them dishonest. So him now learns that the man supposed to kill him. And what him do? He now ask him, he put things in place. That's why he's still there here. Unlike, the, unlike, um, the, uh, unlike um, John Dixon and Mandes and Cairo and, yeah, and the others, them kill all the people and them feel like, say, boy, all right, we'll come by here and come together as one. I have peace. Man, them know that. The man them say, oh, you know how much people want to hurt. So everything they put in place. And then the man them, them come out with them PR things. Say, I tax the man, they want to tax them. Some, peep, some people are connected to them, say, I lie. While the residents are up on Warwick Hill, them say, I true. You understand? Yeah, because, I mean, we talk with people up there, show we on, that show we one and two look at things. And we video call them and them thing there. Them video call we and show we say, see it on a lie. Me live here so. How, uh, this is how we live on one and two little things. I see it here. And I lie them, I tell him they want to tax me and them thing there. So, they are defend the people, they are work on a different whopper for kill the man, them. The men, them. So, I doubt if I, the only statement the police them get from one of the two men, I found the two men, them were, we get shot. And when I go tell you, you understand? Mandes, Mandes son will get shot, him identify the man, the man, him thing, because he know them. So, him, a good thing him can run. Anyway, we we'll continue the journey with Mikey Pelp and Cartel, or Mikey Pelp, um, Palalu's, his life. You understand? So, Mikey Pelp, our relationship, you know, we have vibes Cartel had long deteriorated, transforming from friendship to bitter rivalry that permeated, permeated water forts and catching, dividing communities, ignited loyalties on both sides. So Vibes Cartel escalating an already deadly feud and setting in motion the tragic chain of events that would ultimately cost Pala his life. This move by Pelper, if true, would reflect high stakes, loyalty and dangerous trust embedded in Jamaica's street culture, where every alliance is built on a delicate balance of respect and perceived in invincibility. Mikey Pelper he did have more money than Cartel at the time. And because he have power and respect, we are well known with supporters across Waterford who would go to any lengths to defend his name and reputation. And the people them talk about they are lynch bomb like as some good people them and them money are whole for life them destroy. You know. His influence reached even beyond the local communities and any perceived threat to his standing was taken seriously. So as tension intensify, it's alleged that Pelper went beyond simple co um, countering cartel's influence. According to street rumors, he took a more calculated approach by putting price on cartel's life and recruiting Pala to carry out the hit. Pala was a favorite man with ties to Danai Williams, a known figure with his reputation for a ruthless enforcement. So with Pala's skill and loyalty seemingly redirect towards Pelper, the rumor of an assassination order travel quickly, reach the years of, of Cartel and his close confidence. This revelation marked a turning point, one where alliances turn lethal. Cartel responded by seeking protection and reinforcement from those he trusted, including his ally Linville Thompson, Shabdan, Leighton Liberty Cork, and Christopher Dudu's Cork brother. Known for his unwavering loyalty and willingness to act decisively. Shabdan. Yeah, Shabdan a part of the stone crusher gang. This a labor right um, gang in a Bay. Shabdan took on the responsibility of neutralizing Pala's threat. The resulting confrontation ended in Montego Bay St. James, where Shabdan allegedly confronted and killed Pala, eliminating a potential threat to Cartel's life. Pala's death was not only a targeted retaliation, but a symbolic message to Pelper that anyone aligned with him, it's underscore the risk of street loyalty in Jamaica. 
where rumors and rivalry test alliances can escalate into deadly confrontations. In these circles, reputation or everything, a single word can ignite a fatal conflict by orchestrating palace debt, cartel and his associates demonstrated the length they would go to protect their lives and their standing. A chilling reminder of the cost of allegiance and betrayal in the brutal world they inhabited. In one of his songs, Cartel subtly mocked the death of Gregory Thompson known as Pala, blending art with real life events in a way that seems to taunt those who cross him in the truck tiger 12 gauge. Cartel, Cart, Cartel praises those responsible for Pala's killing, subtly weavering in reference that int at the crude actual betrayal and brutal end that Pala faced. The arc of his musical jeering speaks volumes about Cartel's perception of power and revenge, suggesting that for him, music is not only a creative outlet, but a means to reaffirm his dominance and control. Pala's death was rooted in one critical allegiance, his loyalty to Mikey Pelpa. A loyalty openly declared by stating that Pelpa was his son. This statement marked him as an enemy in Cartel's eye and seal his fate. However, his death was more than a simple retaliation. It was a betrayal by those he considered allies. In the criminal world, loyalty is a fragile illusion. Survival is often a matter of luck rather than true allegiance, as betrayal can come at any, car, any moment. For criminals, loyalty is hollow, a hollow concept overshadowed by self-interest and constant threat of elimination. On the day of Pala's death, Pala was in his room where he, was, he had been drinking and enjoying the company of his child's mother. After they were together, him have sex, he fell asleep, unaware of the deadly betrayal awaiting him. As he lay vulnerable, the door to his room opened. Shabdan, a close associate of Cartel, a cop named Sterling, his trusted enforcer within law enforcement, enter silently. With calculated precision, they approached the bed and without hesitation, shot Pala twice in the head, ensuring there would be no chance of survival in the same composed manner. They left the room, brushing past the woman who had unwittingly opened the door for them. So, it's baby mother, you know. She opened the door for the cleaning people. Not knowing said the man them did the day So as they opened it, man them just walked past. She not even get to make a sound. Because she did so frightened. Because she thinks she's a police. Because um, Sterling in a police uniform. So she would have more or less she thinks she's a police. But little did she know some man dressed as police. So Shabdan would have just said a police, him just like him a detective, him just like him a police, like a detective in a tall shirt. Tall shirt and him shirt tucking and him having a gun. And him just lick him away. Just like that. So Paula's death. was a message to anyone who dare to stand in the way or express loyalty to a postal cartel. It illustrates that in this world, there are no friends, only fleeting alliances and lurking betrayal. Criminals survive not by loyalty but because of luck and timing. Pala's tragic end is a reminder that trust is a currency quickly spent in the underworld where the only guarantee is the inevitably betrayal. I don't know why a man wants to be a criminal. Pala was no stranger to violence, having killed many by his, for his handlers Danai Williams, who acted as his boss and mentor in Jamaica and the world, Pala's loyalty to Williams was fierce and he was feared as a ruthless enforcer. He had waged a deadly war against Tony Brown, a figure deeply connected within the Rockford era, who had ties to Member of Parliament Angela Brownberg's daughter. So in this feud, Pala took down many of Tony Brown's men building an extensive, extensive list of enemies, each seeking revenge for the lives he had taken. So by the time of his death, 
powerless of adversary spans communities and rival gangs, all of whom had ample motive to want to want him gone. Thus, when the news of his killing surfaced, most assumed it was the work of Rockford men seeking to settle old score. However, they were mistaken. Pala's death was an act of retaliation by his rivals. It was, a, it was meticulously planned. It. His death was not simply the result of a straight feud. It involved careful coordination and including powerful figures and even the police are rumored to have played a role. This level of involvement underscored the calculated nature of his killing, marking it as, as more than an ordinary street assassination. The precision and planning made it clear that it was an execution meant to eliminate Pala, with no room for escape or survival. Adding insult to injury, Vibes Cartel later released a song mocking Pala's death title, No Boy Can Catch Me Asleep. <laughs> the lyrics seem to taunt Pala's final moment, a harsh reality, and reminder that in the end, Pala himself was caught off guard, killed as he slept. A bitter irony that Cartel was all too willing to exploit in his music. This song released after Pala's death served not only as a dig at Pala's vulnerability, but as a testament to Cartel's sense of victory over his enemies. A message of defiance to anyone who might think they could outmaneuver him. Pala's death serve as a dark example of lethal nature of loyalty and the betrayal in Jamaica's criminal landscape. For those who live by the code of the underworld, every alliance is fragile and the death can come even from unexpected quarters. Pala's killing wasn't merely the end of a notorious enforcer, but a calculated move within a larger game where power and survival inch and rootless statics, often orchestrated by those who see their associate as dispensable in pursuit of con control. Pala's murder in Montego Bay revealed a dangerous river of respect, fear and calculated power that governs the lives of those entangled in the Jamaican criminal world. It serves as a cautionary tale about deadly consequences of divided loyalty and the stakes involved when individuals pursue dominance in their environment. In this world, even whispers on the street can become harder for life and death, where every move is, is a gamble and betrayal is often met with bloodshed. The sudden and mysterious death of, of Michael Augustus Lynch, better known as Mikey Pelper, has raised some more, has raised more question and answer, leaving an eerie cloud of suspicion and intrigue over his last moment. So, we are telling him, so, um, about Mikey Pelper, and you know, some people, you know, want to know about um, him, um, Pelper, or him dead, and all of these things. But um, before we go there, we wanted to know that, um, yeah. You know that um, Pelper was a man who played an integral role you know, in a Vibes Cartel life. So, let us continue your journey. You know, you understand? So, the whisper, you know, across Waterford began to circulate. So, before, Pel bef um, before them did start war, is a Pelper place, you know, Cartel met Shorty. Yeah, man, in behavior, mother, Tony um, Shorty Johnson. Mikey Pelper have the, um, the woman them dressed like why would I say no? Like the um, the woman them are the, are the Playboy Mansion, UF now. But in a Pelper um, settings, the woman them just in them, uh, them brazier and panty. But you can't touch them because the man they are bad man, you know. So men, when they do business in a theme place, them serve them just like how you see it in a movie and them thing they are, if you watch um, the Playboy of them. So when man go inside, go in there, so that's why him have big business going on and them thing in the car. Them woman they are serving a brazier 
and panty. So a man go there, a man has to see the real thing. You know what I'm saying? So a man soldier get hard and cartel. He man pay for a friend, so he go there and say, Shorty, Shorty, she had no flowers still, but she was flowers compared to the other. I'm saying, boy, I don't want them one. And I saw him and cartel knock it off. So even the woman where, where the cartel the, um, children, a Mikey Pelper, Michael Augustus Lynch, aka Mikey Pelper, and him the cartel that the woman there. Shorty. Yeah, man. And then along with it, so like funny. You know, I just saw it go. So later, Pelper, yeah, man, him dead. And whisper across waterfall began to circulate. At cartel use science or obia. So them say a cartel obia. We mean for running from Jamaica in the cast. He mean I lose more men in a war and them thing there. So you understand? So my run come now America don't come at money. I'm have all the money because I have all house uptown and up a smoky veil and all kind of thing. And we're gonna play some things about him too, cause we have um, MIU man, give us some information about Mikey Pelper and all the police and all of them things. So, we just have to find all of them, you know, just go in the archive them and find all of these things and play it um, for the people that are Patreon. Yeah, if you join the Patreon squad, you'll be able to, you know, hear all of them things about Mikey Pelper and some corrupt police, money run and all kind of things. So, we'll continue the journey. Yeah, so some people say people in my waterfall say a cartel science are all behind a form of mystic influence to manipulate Pelpa's fate. For many Jamaicans, the idea of science holds strong cultural significance. And in a rivalry as intense as this, the notion of spiritual manipulation feels both chilling and plausible. So why they ask, would Pelpa jump from a boat that show no signs of distress? especially considering his status as a seasoned figure who had navigated far more dangerous waters. To some, the circumstances of his death seemed to convenient as though orchestrated by unseen hands, whether human or spiritual. And the man dead uh, less than 30 feet fra- less than 30 feet from shore and him can't swim. So that's why people say I obey him by him. So people support him um, waterfall have voiced these suspicions. Suggesting that Pelper held a weak ticket over cartel, a term implying leverage or control. Was there something Pelper knew or possessed that made him a threat to cartel's influence? So, this theory has steer Waterford's resident who were left wondering whether Pelper's sudden death was truly an accident or a calculated elimination of a man who had once stood as a far medicinal power player in. St. Catherine Turf Wars. As Waterford and Portmore continue to debate the fate of Mikey Pelper, the story serves as a stark reminder of the precarious balance of power, loyalty and danger that shape the lives of those deeply entrenched in Jamaica's dance hall and criminal worlds. Whether his death was a tragic accident, a betrayal or something, some occult, the impact resonates as a sobering testament to the cause of influence in a world where power, respect and control are often bought at the highest price. Palafiat serves as a stark reminder of the inherent betrayal and deception that define there are no true friends. Every individual is driven by dishonesty, self-interest and a willingness to manipulate others in order to survive in this world. Ethics, morals, truths are non-existent. Treats that simple do not align with criminal mindset. So when a man asks a boy, yeah, and a man a friend. In a criminal world, that no world like that. Because there is no honest criminal. None. The notion of an honest criminal is a contradiction. As each one is ultimately willing to betray even their closest associate if it serves their purpose. Yeah. I can't tell you, because if you look, most of the people them, who are involved in a crime, especially in America, the first one will get by it. In my first one, I sell out everyone forget the least sentence. And them um, the youths in our community them. Especially black community, they then they learn. Them still believe that them immune from what them what, what they have seen happen. Boy, this man turned on him friend and them was like brother. The one I get twenty year, next one get two. The one I get two year, corporate, and the one in a corporate get twenty. 
a man still a commit crime. Make that make sense to me. I was sure he said I'm a dummy. And them fees say a cool life. What cool about it? I tell you. I don't know unless the man just love you in a jail, in a space with other men. They're just sick people, that man. You understand? So, while expecting, um, so, violating people's rights, it's wrong. For those aspiring to be the next Dan, eager to earn a place and a, earn a place and a wall or a zinc fence as a so-called era, let Pal Pala's story be a reality check. Violating others' rights, other people's human rights, while expecting society and government to honor your own, is a flaw and self-defeating mindset. How can one demand respect and fairness while pursuing a path defined by cruelty and dishonesty? Think critically about the cost of that lifestyle and let it sink in. For those who romanticize the life of a Dan, realize it comes with no loyalty, no real respect and certainly no lasting honor. Just a destructive cycle that ends in betrayal, isolation and legacy painted only in tragedy. Nothing nice about it. So I don't know where I fight and I want to be the next palace, isn't it? Yeah, you want to picture paint on a zinc fence or uh, you want to paint on a wall. But you know it has ending in a tragedy. There is no honest criminals. It was Vibes Cartel close associate Linval Thompson Jr. known as Shabdan who acted as the trigger man in the execution of Gregor Paula Thompson. Danai Williams stop enforcer in Montego Bay St. James. The sack of violence underscored the high stakes environment and ruthless tragedy employed within Jamaica's criminal network. Pala's death served as a powerful reminder of the thin and dangerous lines that mark alliances in the underworld. Lines that can shift rapidly from loyalty to lethal betrayal. Shabdan actions illustrate the length to which individuals within these circles will go to protect influenced and eliminate perceived threats. Further reinforce the brutal reality that trust is rare and survival often comes at the expense of others. There is no honest criminals. It's intriguing to consider the life and a lore of Michael Augustus Lynch, known to many as Mike, Mikey Pelpa, a man who was not only a musician and a drug dealer, but also a playboy with an unmatched sense of spectacle. spectacle. In Waterford St. Catherine, Pelpa's studio was more than a recording space. It was a world of appellence and intrigue, reminiscent of the glamour scene and Hugh Efton, Playboy Mansion. Pelpa brought a unique brand of American-inspired lifestyle to Jamaica, something his community has never seen before. The women who work in his studio were dressed prog provocatively, lunch and dinner to his guests. This setup designed to captivate and entertain, elevate his studio from a mere workplace to a fantasy-like life environment. In this space, men were drawn into an atmosphere that blurred the lines between business and pleasure. Help a female employee were strictly off limits, while they entice with revealing attire, they were there to serve, not to engage. This restriction only heightened the allure, as men could see, but not touch, adding an air of exclusivity and control that Pelper maintained with ironclad authority. It was within this very studio that Vibes Cartel first laid eyes on Tanisha Johnson, who would become known as Shorty, the future mother of his children. Calv cal captivated by her presence, Cartel found himself drawn to her and Pelper in a gesture of generosity or perhaps strategic alliance gave her to him. This moment marked the beginning of the long-lasting relationship between Cartel and Shorty, one that would shape both their lives and trajectory of Cartel's personal and public persona. Pelpa Studio thus become a symbol of both power and transformation, a place where music, allure and connections intertwine. In creating this environment, 
Mikey Pelper had reshaped the cultural fabric of Waterford, blending American light style charisma with distinctly Jamaican edge, leaving an indelible mark on those who experienced his world. Many of those who are willing to kill for Vibes Cartel seem to do so merely out of allegiances, but from a deep, almost reverent attachment to him, as if he's more than just a man, as if he was a deity. For these individual cartel transcend the role of a musician or a public figure. He embodies an ideal, a powerful symbol of resistance, influence and cultural pride. The sense of idolization fuels their actions, driving them to extreme lengths in his name, often with a level of devotion that resembles worship more than loyalty. So the way them people I love wives cartel, they may kill for him, no problem. Cartel's impact on Jamaica's cult, Jamaican culture, particularly within the dancehall scene, has positioned him as near myth, near mythic figure in the eyes of many. He speaks to the struggles, dreams, and ambition of countless fans who see him a reflection of their own lives. This renaissance has created a pun that not only personal but also spiritual. To his followers, he represents a voice that challenges authority, an unfiltered high kind of resilience who refuses to bow to conventional standards. For those who hold him in light, the idea of loyalty shifts from simple allegiance to fervent dedication, a willingness to hack on his behalf without question or hesitation. In this elevated view, cartel supporters see themselves as protectors of his legacy. His words, lifestyle and music hacked as guiding principles that influence their own identity. They are not just defending a man, but upholding a cause, a cultural movement they believe is threatened by those who challenge or oppose him. This transformation from fan to follower and from follower to defender leads some to justify even the most extreme actions viewing their loyalty as an essential role in preserving what cartels represent. This unwavering support reveals both the power of cartels' influence and the intensity of his followers' beliefs. In their eyes, their devotion to him is a badge of honor, a way to align themselves with a figure who, to them, is an indomitable force. For these devoted followers, their willingness to kill for cartel becomes not only an act of loyalty, but an act of faith where his preserved and perceived greatness warrants their ultimate allegiance. The tale surrounding Gregor Thompson, a.k.a. Paula, his alliances, his killers and the complex web of betrayal paints a vivid picture of Jamaica's underworld where reliable to shift and survival is paramount. Paula's death orchestrated by Cartel's close associate, the policeman Sterling and Shabdan underscored ruthless measures taken to settle rivalries and secure dominance in this volatile landscape. Yet within this world of violence and strategy, there was also an unusual moment that would after the course of Cartel's life, the introduction of Shati. So in an intrigue, extravagant way, Pelpa brought Shati into Cartel's life within the walls of his Waterford studio, a space that symbolizes influence and charisma. This encounter would become a defining moment, sparking a relationship that shaped Cartel's family and personal legacy. Pelpa's role in his story goes beyond the underworld. He was not only a player in its violent tide, but also an unexpected link in Cartel's life, merging love, ambition and power into one complex narrative. So as we tell you before and we tell all of you, them, all of you were a fight for become done. Just look, it's two years hit end. Either I departure lunch or you end up at prison. There is no honest criminal. As you can see and you listen, we tell you, a vice cartel friend them. Always a plan for kill him. 
And him always can sense that from afar. And as, as the police them say, he's like a silver fox. That's why he outlive all our enemies them. So have yourself a beautiful day. Jamaica, Young Police Channel, out.